Hi, in this session I'll show you how to create a check register in Excel. So for those that are not familiar with a check register, when you open a checking account in most banks, they will give you a little checkbook. And in the checkbook, in addition to the pad that you write your checks, there is also another pad that's called a check register that you can log down the deposits you made and checks that you wrote out. So this is an online version of that in case you wanted to do some calculations to see how much you spent. Now with this, what we can do is also do some totals because we turn this in a table. So I'll show you some kind of cool things here. Uh, the, here's a balance here that does a running balance. So for example, if I added, if I click here and added something else, let's say I made a deposit on 5, 15, 13, press the tab, it automatically brings down that amount. Yeah, so it shows that calculation there. It's basically nothing here. So it just brings that total, that running total. And let's say I made a deposit of $500. Oops. And once I press Control Enter to stay in the same cell, it's going to calculate it there. And let's say for this check mark, it just means that I went online or when I got my statement, I reconciled it with whatever the bank says. This is basically my version of my running account and when I get a statement from the bank, it's their version. So I reconcile it here in the check mark. I can just do a control C to copy, control V to paste to say that, you know, things have checked out. They've reconciled. The nice thing about having it online here too is we have this little total row here, which is part of the table feature in Excel. Let's say, for example, I want to see the sum of the water bills that I've had to date. I can just go under here and click on sum. And maybe in the description, I'll just go ahead and select water bill. Or I can just use the handy dandy search feature here and just type water. And it will search for water bill. So these are the two water bills I want to have. This is probably when it was being paid by check and I have it online here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You can see the water bill entries are here. I have a sum. These are the sum of all the water bill payments that I've made throughout the year so far. I can also kind of gauge an average. There's also an average function here. So maybe the average monthly payment that I'm paying or the average payments I'm paying so far is about 28 bucks. So you can do some some calculations here. There's other calculations that are available, but I find some and average probably are going to be the most used. You can also do the same for credit and in the balance. So let me go ahead and show you how to create this. I'm going to clear this. I'm just going to go ahead and copy a couple rows from here, maybe just the first four rows. Control C to copy over in sheet two. I'm going to go ahead and just paste this as values. I'm not going to paste any of the formatting or anything like that. I'll show you how to do the formatting. So what we want to do first is we want to do, take care of some of the formatting here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a date. Select that row. Go ahead and turn it into a date. Let's do a short date. And in the debit, credit, and balance, let me turn these into uh, currency. Now there's two ways, there's two formats you can use. You can use currency or accounting. So the difference is basically where the dollar bill is put. So here in currency, the dollar bill is right next to the number. If we choose accounting, the dollar bill is over here to the left. I'm going to go ahead and just choose currency for now. And once I have that, that's fine. Now this reconcile, this check mark here, is basically a different type of font. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that and insert, go into insert, symbol, and under wingdings, you look in the font wingdings, it's at the very bottom here, this check mark here. And if you want to know that what the Unicode character code is, it's 252. So there's a keyboard shortcut that you can use, and I think it's Alt something 252. And, and I'll paste it in there, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it via the mouse here. So I'm going to click Insert, Close, and you'll see that that check mark is there. I'm going to go also center that. Let's center that. And I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pretend these are all re reconciled. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So you can see that it also pasted it and it centered it there. So after doing this formatting, I wanna, what I want to do is look at changing this formula. Because right now I've copied it over as values. I want to have this do a running total. I'm going to go ahead and select that and just press delete. And in this first cell here, I mean the cell G3 here, I'm going to do my formula to calculate the running total. So how that's done is I'm going to pr press equal that balance minus the debit, so minus cell D3 
and then plus F3. So since there's nothing in F3, it's just going to be a thousand minus twenty dollars, which is nine eighty. I'm going to go ahead and double click that to bring it down. So the calculation it automatically brings it down. You can see now that G2 it's going to go look reference G2 here. The next cell is going to reference G3, and the next cell is going to reference G4. So the formula copies down quite nicely. So to get the sums and the filters and the average capability, we have to turn this into a table. So what I'm going to do is just select any cell here and insert a table. We can go to insert table here and it's going to bring up this create table window or we can use the keyboard shortcut control T. It's going to bring the same thing and I have, I'm have i going to keep this selected because we're going to use these headers and click OK. And now you can see that it's inserted a table here. Now the one thing that, about this other table I had here, which I'll show it here, is the capability when we add uh, another row to have the balance kind of filled out automatically. You can see like when I added a row here and I added something like maybe, in, I just put another deposit, you can see that it moved it down here. So there's a formula that does that. You can see that formula here and I'll kind of describe it in sheet two here. So to do that, let me go ahead and just add another row. I'm just going to go ahead, select this last cell in the table here, click tab, and in here you can see that it it kind of moved it down and I don't want that to happen. I just want it to happen when I start filling out this transaction description. So I'm going to go up here, the first cell where it has the formula, and the formula that I'm going to put in is an if then statement. So basically, verbally it's saying if this cell is blank, then make the cell blank. Otherwise, if this cell is not blank, do this formula. The above cell minus the debit plus the credit. So to do that, I'm going to put if open parentheses, if this cell is blank, so there's a function that checks to see if a cell is blank. It's called is blank. It's right there. I'm going to click that. So I'm going to say if this cell is blank, and you can see that it's picked out this weird description. Well, not weird, but it says transaction description. So basically what happens is when you're in a table, it provides a structured cell reference. Uh, basically, it's just in a way easier for some people to look at the cell as his name of the header instead of just having it like G2 or D3. In this instance we can keep that or if you don't you don't feel comfortable doing that you can just type C3. It's going to be the same thing. So if if that is C3, so if C3 is blank, what's the value that, that we want to report back if it's if that's true, if this is blank. Well, we want, to have, we want it to bring back a blank. We want, to, we want to have this cell have nothing. So we just have open quotes, open double quotes, close double quotes, and then comma. What if it's false? Well, if it's false, then do that formula. I'm going to press Control Enter to stay in that cell. It's going to give me an error because I forgot to put in a close parentheses up here, but Excel smart enough to close that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Yes and now it's done that formula. Anyways, I, I picked this up. This is blank feature from uh, Mike Gervin over at Excel is Fun. So he's got a lot of cool videos there. Just give a shout out to him. And now what I can do is just kind of double click this to bring the formula down. So now you see that that balance there has disappeared now because there's nothing in here. So let's say for example I wanted to add a deposit. Maybe I made a deposit on the 15th and once I type something in here and press enter you'll see that balance bring it down there. And let's say I made a deposit here, $500, oops, press tab, and you can see it brought it over now. And let's say I can just control to see the copy, control V to paste to say that maybe I looked at the statement and it reconciled. Now, if I wanted to get those totals, the nice thing about the table feature, it allows you to do a total row at the bottom. So I can either just, I can either right click and, and go into the table and have a totals row, or I can just click on this total row here, depending on how you like to do it. There's different ways to do it. Now it automatically converts or puts down a total row and adds all this up. We don't want that because that's, we don't need to add up the totals for the balance. So I'm just going to go ahead and click none. And maybe I want to see, you know, the total rows, the count, or the sum for the debits and the sum for the credits. So in any case, I want to see what kind of bills I have. Well, I just do a bill, all my bills, 
what are the what are the bills that I'm paying out? Of course, it's nothing here, but what are the bills I'm paying out, or what's the average that I've got? Forty dollars in, in bills. So that's a nice little capability of the table feature in Excel. You know? And when we create a check register, there's a lot of cool things that we can do with it. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you and hope to see the feedback. Also, do you think others might benefit from this video? If so, click the share text below. YouTube will automatically provide a shortened link to this video and give you options to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other social networking sites. Again, thanks for watching.